Today, secrets will be revealed. What you see before you is the world-famous St. Peter's Basilica, the symbol of the Vatican. But these Vatican City walls hold far more than just a church. Deep within the complex lies the Vatican secret archives, a vault containing millions of sensitive documents spanning over 12 centuries. These have long been strictly off limits to the general public. Until now, ready to go beyond the tourist trodden halls? Follow me. Through the Basilica's enormous front entrance, we'll transition from the open-air St. Peter's Square into the multi-layered indoor complex. See those guards dressed in blue and yellow? They're actually from Switzerland, and it's their unwavering duty to protect the Pope. Let's head inside. Directly connected to the right flank of the Basilica is perhaps the world's most famous room, the Sistine Chapel. Combined, the Basilica and the Chapel are said to carry a $1 billion value. This rectangular brick building features six arched windows on each side of the walls. However, the undeniable focal point is, well, look up, Michelangelo's ceiling. Five million people walk through this room every year, and while we enter for free, most tourists pay 14 euros each. That's 70 million euros straight into the Vatican's pocket. As we leave the chapel behind us, follow me into the Vatican Library. It's here, adjacent to the main library, where we find our hidden entrance to Catholicism's most confidential room, the Vatican Apostolic Archive. Centuries worth of secrets hide behind this door. Only VIP guests, like us, who possess a pre-approved letter granted by the Archive's prefect are allowed to set foot inside. Ready? Key card? Check. Combination code? Uh, look away, please. Check. Letter of approval? Check. Alrighty, let's go underground. These seemingly endless shelves of books, stacked from floor to ceiling, run far deeper than the naked eye may realize. If we took all of the shelves and stretched them end to end, the Vatican archives would stretch some 53 miles, about four times the length of Manhattan Island. That's a lot of shelves, and they hold a lot of information. Let's stroll down the central corridor and see what we find. On our left sits the section containing notes relating to the 1633 trial against Galileo. Beyond it, in that small dossier, is a letter sent from Michelangelo to Pope Julius II. As we move over to our next row, we find a box dedicated to the trials against the Knights Templar from 1307. While there's a year's worth of Knights Templar reading, the crown jewel is this document, the Chinon parchment. Unrolled, well, see for yourself, this scroll is an astounding 197 feet long. Supposedly, it was lost for hundreds of years, yet here it is, right before our eyes. As we continue down the concrete-floored walkway, here's the section dedicated to the Intercatera. For those unfamiliar, the Intercatera was a decree issued by Pope Alexander VI in 1493 that essentially split the world between the Spanish and the Portuguese. Next up is a highly restricted section, the documents from World War II. Notice the no entry sign? That's because everything dated after 1939 is still closed to the public, including the papers of Pope Pius XII. This section has spurred quite a controversy. Why? Because Pius XII's silence during the war led to some questioning which side he truly supported. The letters behind this wire casing, which looks similar to this one, may reveal the ultimate truth. This is one of the church's most controversial mysteries, one which we might never truly solve. Despite the immense historical significance and billions of dollars worth of financial value, scratch that, priceless value, these letters, scrolls, and decrees aren't sealed with airtight technology. While we do have some safety deposit style boxes against the wall, as you can see, most of the contents are simply held in red folders labeled with brief identifiers. Curia Romana, that means Court of Rome, some other shelves, like these over here, are full of cardboard containers with damaged corners and faded colors, clearly showing their age. Are these documents ever to be released to the public? Well, not for a long time. At an absolute minimum, these papers are only shared once they're 75 years old. At that point, they still belong to the Pope. Like all libraries, the Vatican also features dedicated reading rooms, just like this one. Take note of the sacred art hung on its walls. These pieces represent just a sliver of the estimated 70,000 total artwork within the Vatican Museum, a collection worth billions of dollars all up. But hey, judging by this, they can afford it. The best calculations suggest the Vatican Bank holds between 10 and 15 billion dollars. But what about expenses? Apparently a substantial amount of that cash goes to paying staff, 
In 2014, for example, staff payments were the Vatican's biggest expense, shelling out a total of 126.6 million euros for 2,880 employees. Anyway, enough reading. Follow me outside the reading room and down into, ready to be surprised? A secret bunker. The door we just walked through has an airlock, making this entire underground shelter fireproof. It was designed to, of course, protect the most fragile documents in case of emergency. Onwards, in there is the school. Through the glass window, you can see a clergyman nose deep in what looks like a history book. The desks are long and flat, the walls are painted with beautiful artwork, and the floor is checkered marble. Time for some sunlight, don't you think? As we exit the library and museum area into the lush and beautifully landscaped Vatican Gardens, take a moment to soak in the significance of what we just saw. Not only did we just explore what is officially the world's smallest country and the only UNESCO World Heritage Country, but we saw a treasure trove of secrets that are ordinarily forbidden to the general public. Pretty amazing, don't you think? Which secret location should we tour next? Let us know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day. Catch you next time.